Hey friends, I'm back with another video. Here are my top 10 tips for beginners entering EverQuest. Or maybe you've been like from old school days and you're coming back and you forgot most of it. This might help you too. So tip number one, play the tutorial zone. It may sound kind of dumb and especially if you're a returning player, why would you need the tutorial? Well, you get armor, you get the quests for the armor, you know, and, and try to make sure you, you do all the quests to get the full set. That means feet, legs, chest, arms, waist, I mean wrist, <laughs> and head. Um, the weapon, uh, the weapon's kind of crappy, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. You'll probably find other weapons in the Glooming Deep Beginner's Tutorial Zone that are actually better as far as damage and delay ratio than the reward they give you that has, I mean, sure, it's got, a, it's got some stats, but the reason why you quest the armor is to get the stats. I'd rather have a really good weapon with a great damage delay ratio and no stats on the weapon than to have a terrible weapon that does crappy damage, has a horrible delay, but has like some hit points and, and, and wisdom or something on it. So yeah, work the tutorial. Tip number two, when using mercenaries, instead of getting a priest class, like a, a cleric mercenary to heal you, try getting a tank instead. And then make sure that you use the roles. Roles means that you set the tank to be the main tank and you set yourself to be main assist. I may have to explain this in more detail in another video or you can try to Google it. Tip number three. After you're done with the tutorial, you find yourself in the Crescent Reach Zone. Head to the third floor right away of the main building thing, whatever the hell that is. Um, and find the NPC, he's like right there as soon as you get off the elevator on the third floor, you talk to him and you get the Dark Heart quest. That is a pretty easy quest for a decent weapon, especially if you're a caster class, um, you know, because it has some nice stats for you as a caster, but it also works if you're a warrior or a paladin. You know, I think it ends up being a two-handed blunt weapon if you're a warrior or a paladin, and it's a one-handed blunt if you're a caster class. It also works for priest classes too, like clerics and, and druids and shaman and stuff. So it just, you, you get the quest, you go down on the second floor, you kill a barbarian, you loot his pouch, you go back up to third floor, you turn the pouch in, boom, you've got your cool weapon. This is why I say getting a weapon in the tutorial isn't that important. Of course, you'll need one just to get through the tutorial, but whatever you know you end up having is, is going to be good enough until you get to Crescent Reach to quest that weapon. That's uh, I think it's an 820 delay ratio for the one-handed for casters, and I'm not sure what it is for like warrior types. It might be like, because it's two-handed, it might be something like uh, uh, 1030 or something like that, or, or 1024. It might even be 1020. I don't know. I don't remember the uh, ratio, but it also has some stats on it. So do that. And tip number four, try to find the bear caves in, Crescent, in the Crescent Reach zone and kill some bears. If you're lucky, you get a couple of high quality bear pelts and medium quality bear pelts and some marrow and all that stuff is great for trade skills. Which leads me up to tip number five. Use the barter tool. If you type in slash barter and hit enter, a window comes up and this is the barter tool. And it's great because it could be used anywhere you are to unload stuff that you don't need or don't want for money. Um, of course, not real money, but platinum, you know, in-game money. Um, one of the, the popular things to sell is things like high-quality bear pelts or 
even just uh, the uh, various animal pelts like crude or sullied and uh, marrow is kind of hard to find so like sullied marrow I think damp marrow dry marrow I'm not sure all of the different kinds of marrows there are um, but the loams things like that uh, they're usually in demand uh, the spinneret fluid that's one of the ones that also uh, sells a lot in you know I think most servers um, especially the Ferrona Vi server that server is always hopping with buyers eager to buy your junk because they use it to make trade skill stuff so you can make a lot of money uh, using the barter tool you don't even need to be a premium member you don't have to pay for a membership you can be a free player and use the barter tool to sell your stuff number six or tip number six if you find yourself leveling up faster than your spell skills then try making a macro key macro button that will let you sort of spam your spells where you're casting it like five times in a row pretty quick um, until you burn through all your mana you know then you could sit down for five minutes meditate and then you know hit that macro again so you practice using that spell a bunch and build up your skill that way you're not going to be fizzling in the middle of a fight tip number seven do you want some free jewelry who wouldn't want some free jewelry well check out these quests that I have up here shown in my window um, you could do some of these to get some free starting jewelry it's not much but it helps and it gives you some stats and it's like four or five quests and they're all pretty easy to do right there in Crescent Reach tip number eight when you reach about level 18 you can go and quest yourself a really nice 10 slotted 75% weight reduction bag in Crescent Reach you go to the second floor and you talk to this one blacksmith and he gives you the quest for Nolish tools then you leave Crescent Reach you go out to Blightfire Moors take a right and you head down to the Null encampments you gotta kill uh, like four Nulls on the outside that drop the hammers and then you go into that first cave and you go left and right there there's four more gnolls that drop mining picks. You need the four hammers, four mining picks. You take them back to that blacksmith. You turn them in, and boom, you've got this sweet bag. All you do is have to kill some stupid gnolls. Pretty easy. When you're around level 20-ish and up, uh, anywhere from 20 to 80, you know, um, there's an NPC in POK that you talk to him and you can get daily quests from him where you know you can do all his quests or you know the ones that he's willing to give you for your level once a day and the rewards are a belt uh, shoulder pads or a cape and all of them have stats and focus effects and if you're like a melee class like a monk or a warrior or a rogue the belt gives you haste which lets you attack faster so that's pretty sweet too tip number 10 if you're interested in learning trade skills you can learn just about any trade skill I think except for maybe fishing if I'm wrong please feel free to tell me where to get the fishing task to skill up in fishing but most of them are in crescent reach there's tailor and blacksmith and all these different types where you can skill up to level 54 uh, or 54 skill level and uh, without spending anything I'm, you might need to buy your sewing kit and that's it but they provide you with the materials that you put in the sewing kit and combine uh, and you do multiple tasks until you reach skill level 54 in which that's when they're out of tasks for you but at 54 you can go to Freeport and try to quest for your beginner's trophy which that gives you a bonus like a a skill modifier bonus when you equip it 
to do that particular trade skill. So that's also pretty handy. It also has some stats that might help, um, like charisma, when you know, which is kind of good when you're buying and selling a lot of stuff. And then I do have an eleventh tip because I figure let's include eleven because not everybody's interested in trade skills, and this way there's still ten that might interest you. So if you uh, are, are past level ten. And because uh, that's where you run out of spells. Like if you're buying your spells in the tutorial zone, they only really go up to level 10. And even there in Crescent Reach, they only have spells up to level 10 more or less for you. So if you're, you're getting past level 10, you're like level 20 or something, and you don't think you might have all your spells, be sure to visit the Plane of Knowledge Library. There's a tool in your taskbar where you can hit the word find and then you can have a window pop up and say you're looking for necromancer spells because you're not sure if you have all your necromancer spells well hit find necromancer spells like the you know might even show you the levels of the spells that you need like 1 through 25 for example and you'll see a little invisible trail it looks sort of like this weird umbilical cord from the movie Donnie Darko and you just follow that to the NPC that's selling those spells you're not a caster you don't need spells well you might be a warrior or a rogue or a monk and they use tomes tomes that give you special skills and abilities too and this works the same way those tomes are located in the library so you can go and find the tomes that you need and you can use the find tool just like anybody else to find your tome that you need and that way you'll always have your up-to-date spells and skills that you require for your adventuring I hope these tips have helped you uh, please feel free to like and subscribe it would be nice to grow the channel and if you found this informative please leave a comment and if you want me to do more stuff like this please let me know have a great day and have a wonderful tomorrow.